All right, today I'm going to show you how to make rust. What you're going to need is you're going to need nails, um, coffee filters, something to hold down your coffee filters, salt, a spoon to stir your salt, a big jar for filtering, a smaller jar for making the rust. And uh, if you're going to do it the old way, you need a nine volt battery and some wire. And I have made it a lot easier for you if you can find a larger voltage uh, converter like around your house. Okay, this is the old way. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but there is very minimal um, amount of bubbles. Yeah, you, you, can, you can't really even see anything going on in there. Yeah, that's not doing much. All right, so um, I have a new way, and I will show you how to do it. It is a lot more effective. All right, first what you're going to want to do is add your salt. Use a good bit of salt. Okay, you want to dissolve it. That's pretty good. All right, you got your two screws attached to my 15 volt converter that I actually got off a stereo system that broke. Yes. Stay. Okay, we're good. All right, here I've got my little converter. I'm just gonna plug this in to my extension cord. All right, it should start up a little slow and then it'll, you'll see it. All right, and then you're just gonna let that sit for a bit until the water turns like a black color. In a couple seconds here, you should start to see the water significantly change color. All right, I'll take a little break and you can keep washing. Although making red iron oxide looks like fun, there are some simple safety precautions that should be taken before and during the procedure. A good start would be to not touch the water, seeing as you are running electricity through it, you could get zapped. Check to make sure that your tetanus shots are up to date. Always make red iron oxide outdoors, especially when using a salt water medium. When salt is added, it creates a deadly chlorine gas, so a well ventilated area is highly recommended and safety glasses are always a good idea for any kind of project. Some common uses for red iron oxide include thermite mixtures, rocket candy, and production of unique paints. This video was shot over a span of 52 minutes, but was sped up so that you can see the whole process.
right, as you can see, uh, it's accumulated quite a good bit of rust. Uh, hold on, let me just take this out real fast. What I use me back in on that. All right, this is what's left of the nail. see it's mostly corroded uh, it's very thin all right and uh, right here we have like uh, the nail like formation coming down it's all rust I'll be back Logan. all right that was my father um, you can see it coming down that's all rust all rust down here so a lot more effective than your typical 9 volt battery. And also it won't run out of power as quickly like a 9 volt. You have to replace it. This is constant power. And you can run that as long as you want, basically, unless you know your thing catches on fire, which I don't recommend. Alright, after you have this, then you're gonna want to filter it. This is basically the last step before drying. Now it's secured, it won't fall in. But you're just gonna pour it in there. Uh oh my god. What are you monsters doing? This is what you get after you have uh, filtered it. See, I've got all of my water in here that we do not want. All of our good rust is in there. So basically, you just take this off. Ugh, that just splashed in my mouth. That's nasty. Oh, give me two seconds. I'm gonna get some to put this on. Ugh. That's a good one. Oh, that's nice. Oh, ho good batch, good batch. Oh, it's so thick too. Damn, I recorded a good one. Yeah, you're gonna like this. That is all rust. Mm-hmm. It's so thick. And when it dries, it's gonna turn out, well, it's gonna be a lot more, but it's gonna look like this. 
it's going to be all nice and flaked. That's all rust. And then you just take a knife. You're just going to scrape that off into whatever container you want. And then there you go.